7 o'clock in time to call this January 27, 2014 board, Cleveland County Board of Education meeting to order. Tonight we're going to start off as usual with the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Miller, please pledge. Well, I won't lead us, but I am going to introduce the students who will. Tonight we have students from Jefferson Elementary who are going to lead us in the pledge. We have Kate Oliver. Christopher Ortz, Ortez, I'm sorry, Dewan Jolly, Brady Morgan, and Cora Barbie.
My name is Ralph Jolly. I'm a senior at Shelby High School. My parents are Daniel and Kalaya Jolly. Uh, some things that I'm involved in at school are the, I'm part of the varsity football team at Shelby High. I uh, recently won the state championship. Not only uh, was it a big accomplishment for
for our team, our coaches, but also for the school and the community, for all those who supported us over the years. I was a junior marshal. Uh, I'm a board member of the NRI club. I had the opportunity to be a fourth grade mentor at Jefferson Elementary School. And that was a good, good experience. Currently, I'm undecided about college, but I plan to major in athletic training, and I plan to play uh, football in college. My career goal is to reach my full potential as a student athlete and to be happy because in the end it's all that matters. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is David Allen. I'm a senior at Shelby High School. My parents are David and Amy Allen. Uh, a couple things I'm involved in at school. I played golf and soccer for Shelby High School. Led the conference in assists this year in soccer and went to the state championship last year in golf. Uh, I've gotten a chance to start a couple programs at the high school. I created Charlie's Christmas Project, which helps less fortunate students have a uh, memorable Christmas. And at Jefferson Elementary, I helped create the uh, backpack program, which helps eight students bring home a backpack full of food each weekend. I also got the chance to intern at Young Life this, uh, this past semester, where I got the chance to lead weekly Bible study and be the leader at the freshman, for the freshman cabinet at Wingap. I uh, plan to attend. University of North Carolina and uh, major in political science and journalism. I'm currently a Moorhead Kane finalist and I go the first week of March for the finals weekend. My career goal is to be a political writer. Thank you. My name is Allison Ward. I'm a senior at Cleveland Early College High School. My parents are Paul and Joseph Ward. Um, I'm a member at Bethlehem Baptist Church. I volunteer for CARE, which is an animal rescue group in our community. I am vice president for Cleveland County Youth Council, and I work at Gardner Webb University. I plan to attend college at either Gardner Webb University or Western Carolina to study business. My career goal. I'm not totally sure what I want to do. Elementary and help with the third grade class there. I plan to attend NC State University and study in accounting. 
My career goal is to become a forensic accountant and work for the FBI or the SBI. Thank you. Thank you, Ms.
consideration of the minutes of the January 13, 2014 uh, business session. What's the pleasure to hold? I'll make a motion we approve. Second. Moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of January 13, 2014 business session. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Now on to the closed session of the same date. What's the Make a motion to approve. Second. And moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the January 13, 2014 closed session. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Next item is the Globally Competitive Students. Dr. Fisher, I believe you're going to inform us about this item on the agenda. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Member of the Board, Dr. Bulls, it's my pleasure to come to you this evening. We'll talk to a few minutes uh, about the Reef and Chief legislation. I know you guys have heard a lot about that, a lot of discussion about that. I know our group that was at Bowman Springs Elementary today uh, has some discussion about that. Um, and, and then at the end of uh, the information, I'm going to make a request that you uh, ask that you approve um, a letter that we send to uh, the State Board for some waiver options. But first, I want to kind of just update you and give you a little information about the Reef Achieve. Uh, as you know, it's a um, legislative mandate. House Bill 950 uh, was passed. Uh, and the goal of Reef to Achieve, and if you look at it, give me a copy of, of the actual law, the goal of Reef to Achieve in the legislation. If it's something that I think we agree with, and if you notice the letters I posted for you on board docs, I, I mentioned that in the letter. The, the intent of that, uh, that reading is important and essential. Uh, it's something that we agree on. Um, uh, our instructional staff understands the importance that reading is to student success, uh, the importance it is to graduation, and we by no means, by, by asking for a waiver of, of some of this, we want to minimize the importance of, of reading. Um, but we do have some concerns, as noted in our letter, about, um, about the uh, Reef Chief legislation, and not just with the legislation, but the implementation of, of that. Uh, just to give you a little background on, on that, um, how that works in Cleveland County Schools uh, across the state, um, the Reef Chief legislation basically says, and I'm summarizing, um, that students will be proficient at the end of third grade, and the third grade end of course reading test. Uh, those that are proficient, be promoted. Those students that are not proficient will be then given a retest. It's called a read to achieve test. Uh, if they are not proficient there, then they are to attend summer camp. You know, this is not new information for you, but just, just want to refresh your, your memory. Um, students also have the option before summer school of completing a student portfolio. Um, and some of the questions, concerns that have come up recently and caused a lot of conversation are around that portfolio. Uh, we'll get into that in just a um, so, so there's some different parts of that. And then the summer camp uh, piece comes in there. Um, students at the beginning of the year, and, and if you remember back to our fall work session, I mentioned to you that students will be taking the beginning of the grade. Uh, our teachers and our staff refer that with, as the ball. Uh, first time I saw that written somewhere, I'm like, what is the ball? Uh, but that's the beginning of the grade test, and it is a real DOD. In the past, if you remember years ago, uh, our students, our third grade students, took a pretest. Uh, the BOG is not a pretest. It's an actual third grade, end of, end of grade exam. Uh, those students take that pretest, and that gives an indication of where their students are at. Um, some of the information I've given to you has some criteria for students to be to pass the read to achieve legislation. Obviously, the, the, the best way, the easiest way, and the, the most um, obvious way is to pass the end of grade third grade test. But if a student scores above 442, on the beginning of the grade test, and I believe we had a little over 200, 203, I think, to be exact students that scored above a 442 on the beginning of the grade uh, test in Cleveland County, then, then those students are really exempt from doing uh, the portfolio. They don't need the portfolio even if they fail the, the end of the grade test. And I know that, that's kind of a little bit confusing, but um, it's sometimes confusing for us, sort of like uh, information you get, you get a little piece of information, and then you get a little more, and then you get a little more, a little more. It's not uncommon for us to come in on Monday. I come to Dr. Wilson and say, did you see that memo? And he said, yeah, I've never seen that before. Ask our instructor team. We, we haven't seen that information come out before. So, so some of this information is coming out and it's a little confusing on students that uh, what they can do. 
But if a student, let's, let's say that a student doesn't make a 4.2 um, and, and they're in, in our schools right now, uh, there's a student portfolio that our students are working on. And that student portfolio really causes a lot of anxiety in our teachers and really uh, one of the reasons why we, we've written the, uh, the waiver letter. The portfolio is consisted of uh, 12 standards. Um, each standard has 10 reading passages that can be used in a portfolio. So that gives about 120 uh, portfolios that the students have the option of taking. Um, those students can take up to three a week, um, and they must pass that with an 80% rate, four out of five, or five out of five. Uh, and students take those portfolios. Uh, out of the 10 for each standard, we can choose some to use as instructional passages. Our, our um, director of elementary education, Don Ketchum, has chosen um, one of those passages, and our teachers use that for instruction. The other nine schools can choose which nine they want to use um, in the classroom as, as that portfolio assessment. So students take these assessments during the class, um, and, and then teachers have to grade that. There's a uh, complex set of grading standards that, that uh, for test security have to be used. Um, now, at the end of that portfolio session, the students have successfully completed three portfolios in each of the 12 standards, or 36 passages, then they have met the past student portfolio. If they, let's say, a student gets 24 of them and takes the end of grade test, the read to achieve test, and does not pass those, then they still have 24 done. They have to come to some pen to try to finish the, to get the 36. Um, so that's a little bit of, uh, of background there. Um, you, can, you can see in the letter, uh, we have notice of concerns that we have, not only with the legislation, but the implementation of, of Read to Achieve in the portfolio. First of all, we have concerns about the readability of the passages. Um, I sent you some information this week about the readability of each of those standards. Um, we are concerned that the 12 standards and having students pass through, we are continuing to assess the same standard. Uh, we're, we're concerned that this continuing assessing of these standards lose instruction time. And if you see that, in our, our concerns, it is strong on the loss of instruction time. We heard that today. Uh, I've met with third grade teachers. I've met with principals. I've been meeting with elementary principals tomorrow. The number one concern I have is we're losing instruction time by giving these portfolio passes. <coughs> um, we're we're, we're uh, concerned that because we're giving these packages and having to get so many and losing instructional time, we're losing out on important issues such as math, science, history, those things. Um, we're concerned about the implementation of this plan and students with disabilities and how that impacts those students. And we're concerned that the length of summer camp and the requirement of summer camp really creates some issues for our students, our families, and our schools. Um, so what we've asked for is we, we asked the board to approve um, to endorse uh, three waiver options that we um, uh, have, have sent to um, Robert and the state board. And with your blessing, we'll ask that they uh, consider the option number one is the use of Reading 3D program in lieu of the student portfolios. Um, reading 3D, and Donna's here, she can answer a lot of those questions about Reading 3D. But in short, Reading 3D, 3D is the way that we can assess students' reading. We can determine using that if they are on grade level. Our students, our teachers have to do that already. That's a state requirement. So we're already using this method that will um, assess whether students are reading on grade level. So we're asking that we use that in lieu of the portfolios. Uh, waiver option number two is that we're asking instead of the student have to master three pass three sections or three different passages in each standard, that that would be reduced to one. We feel like if the students master that, then we need to move on and not continue to assess. Uh, I noted there that we would even be happier with only two, but we would, our preference would be one. Our third option is that we would ask for a consideration, some relief there in summer camp. There's a 72 hour or six week minimum. Uh, we're asking that we be able to keep the 72 hour minimum, but reduce that to four weeks. We believe 72 hours over four weeks will uphold the integrity of the law, but will um, ease the operation of our schools. Um, we've had conversations with maintenance about HVAC work, and roof repairs, and painting that needs to happen in our schools. If we have students, lots of students in our classrooms, that, that's very difficult. But also for our parents to commit to 
you know, six weeks of that summer, it would be very difficult. Um, so we're, we're asking that you, you bless this and, and you approve this, uh, these waiver options uh, that we can move forward. Um, Dr. Bowles and I, ha and I have heard from uh, State Superintendent Dr. Gene Atkinson, um, and uh, Dr. Atkinson um, has our information. She did inform us that she's um, not sure that option two and option three uh, will uh, meet the integrity of the law. Um, that we, she, she basically said that, that she's unsure if those would be uh, uh, meet, the, meet what the state board already approved, uh, but that option one would consider to be an option. Our, our request is that we we, uh, we send our request in as is um, and note that not only do we think this is a, a realistic um, request, but this serves the support of our teachers and our schools understanding what they're doing every day in the first class. Um, so at this time, I'd be glad to uh, try to answer any of your questions that you might have um, in regards to read to achieve through the portfolios, beginning grade or end grade exams, or our labor options.
testing than what we are teaching. And I think we do need to ask for this waiver. And I totally support the uh, request for the waiver. Uh, just because a little testing is good, just because a retention is good, we, we don't need to spend all day, all year, worrying our kids and our parents of this program. And I certainly think uh, shortening a summer session from six weeks to four weeks would probably uh, be just as beneficial to the child as it is, and I think it would certainly be much easier on the families and vacations and whatever we can get that uh, reduced to the same amount of time instructionally, but reduce that to four weeks. So I'm wholeheartedly going to support uh, the proposal. I would like to say that I'm also wholeheartedly going to support our commitment from the letter that you wrote. Um, it's a consensus that this initiative is training teachers and teacher assistants, and as we go around, we see that it's dominating um, instructional time. Um, I've also heard from parents who are adversely affected by this. And of course, the students um, are probably the ones who will be most um, affected by it. Um, I, I wrote down that although we do know that all of this can be changed, as we learned at Bowling Springs Elementary, any support that we give them um, will be appreciated. So um, I urge the board um, to ultimately endorse this letter. Thank you all. Dr. Pidgeot, I'm kind of live where you can achieve with the, with the wife who's a third grade school teacher, and I have a daughter that's in third grade. I, I hear this every day. A couple of questions. What kind of time frame are you looking at once we send this letter out that we will hear a reply back from the uh, superintendent? Uh, will the superintendent make this decision? Is she taking it before the board? My understanding is before the state board. Um,
based on what we've been told. And again, I have had a chance to see this in writing where what we were told in that meeting and in other cases. I've had an opportunity to speak with Superintendent Atkinson personally about this. I've also been involved in a conference called the Small Group of Representing Superintendents Across the State to talk about this a couple of weeks ago. And she assured us that if we get waivers, one LEA gets a waiver, that that will be transferable to other waivers. And so our hope is that at least something that we're uh, suggesting, at least one of the school districts is suggesting, will gain some traction. She, she is meeting tomorrow with the um, General Assembly's Governor Operations Committee and assured us that she would take any, you know, two of these are non-starters, I guess, in, in the word. She's assured us that she would take them. Process there would be a recommendation to change the law. The law is what it is. We're bound by it. We're, we're not about to pick and choose which law we abide by and which we don't. This is a regulation we have to abide by. We're going to try our best to implement it with the fidelity that we need to. But our hope is that some of the waivers, at least some of the school districts, suggest will be ones that will find favor and, and will be able to modify.
preach no Bible, and I'm very appreciative of the leadership because I don't hear a lot of whining. You know, this is what they have to do, even though our teachers and our staff are so subjected to so much right now. But uh, the professionalism that I've seen and observed has been very impressive. So I just wanted to make sure that, uh, that uh, our teachers know that uh, we are observing and we are very appreciative of that professional approach. Thirty, and then we're not going to give another forty. We're going to give them 
pounds of tea or whatever that is, the flip. Is that accurate? That is exactly uh, correct. What it really is, Mr. Chair, is they're allowed to do exactly like a house. Progress Billy, as they've completed so much of the work, then they can uh, submit through the local government commission and the local government commission approve that, and they can get up to $30,000 that's been approved by the LGC prior to the actual uh, completion of the finished financial status, but they can't make a final draw like the house until you've done the closing. And then when they're done and they present us the report, then they get the balance of the $40,000. It's not 40 plus whatever it is. That is, that is correct. Okay. Mr. Lee, you did make the distinction that this is still one of the lowest prices that we've had since merger. It is the it, this group of volunteers prior to uh, us going out for bid in 2010-11, the lowest fee that we had prior to that, going all the way back to merger, was 43.5. Thank you. 
discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On to student transfer request. We all had that in our agenda. Sorry. First reading of new policy regarding service animals. Didn't mean to leave you out. Well, all right. So I should have brought that. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, school board members, uh, Dr. Wills. Uh, come before you tonight for the first reading of our request for service animals in our school. Uh, we do have a student in our school system that that is uh, requesting us to consider this option. Uh, in your packet, you've received your information this week and some updates today. Uh, but the, this is 4305, 4305 R, 1, 2, and 3. The first section talks about the definition of service animals. Uh, the procedures for that, um, the liability, the removal. Uh, the second section, uh, the R1, talks about the action of the request and the description of that, how that works. Uh, there are five things for that, and that we can remove the animal if need be, and the liability for that. And then the last two sections actually is the request itself, and then the contract that we uh, provide with them and the school system. At this time, I'll entertain any questions that you may have.
Please know that I appreciate the support I received from board members and our staff. While these are difficult times with many attacks on public schools, I believe our district is poised for even greater success as initiatives in the new strategic plan are implemented. Please know that I will continue to work tirelessly for the success of our schools in my remaining months as superintendent. I will work to ensure a smooth transition when new leadership is selected. I will con also continue to be involved and support the work of our schools in my most important role as a parent in the district. Thank you for the opportunity I've had to serve the Cleveland County Schools. Sincerely, Bruce W. Bull. Thank you, Dr. Bulls. Uh, I know I speak for the board in thanking you for also all of your service and we look forward to your continuing service until June 30th, midnight. Thank you. On to good news. <laughs> well, I can't totally agree that that's good news, to tell you the truth. However, I think it's good news for you, and I think that you will be successful in whatever direction you take yourself as time goes by. Mr. Glover, do you have a motion for the rest of the meeting? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we go into closed session to GS. 1.3 that's print 8.11.